All right, hello there. So looks like you want to do a painting for fun. That's great. Glad to hear that. You're trying to create an appealing character and areas that you want to improve facial expression, as well as looking for improvements on the background, the pose and composition. Okay. What I recommend you do is collect a library of lighting that you personally find to be really good. And so, for example, I grabbed some images that I think apply to your lighting scenario. They're not exactly the same. By looking at these, you can sort of have them side by side with your painting and ask yourself, what's going on in here that isn't happening in, in the painting? You can pretty much do that for all of these. And the cool thing about having reference is that it might even indicate some ideas on how to handle the background. Now, it doesn't just stop there. There's a bunch of other options too for lighting. Now you can have have techniques like casting shadow uh, or having a soft shadow coming from the top or having the arm cast a shadow. And in this collection of images is what I would consider a more of a splash or cinematic kind of lighting scenario. And this is if you want to really take it to a level where it looks theatrical. As we go down here, it's is more of a soft lighting. I, I think I grabbed these because it sort of matched the color palette that you have here. So uh, the question is, let's say we have a reference images. How can we borrow from this and apply it to this to kind of make it look a little bit more impactful as a pretty image? So before I do any of that, actually, let me just impart some knowledge regarding lighting. The easiest thing to kind of start with to understand lighting is just draw a sphere and we'll pretend that there is a light from the top left. And then we can look at the reference and ask ourselves where else could lighting sort of come from? And now in your painting, you did a pretty good job of indicating that light is coming from the left side and there's a bit of bounce light coming from the right. Uh, we'll sort of indicate that here as well. This is softer light over here. The thing is, there's going to be a base value on the sphere. We'll say it's gray. There's going to be a shadow. For the sake of this, we'll say halfway to black. And there's going to be a highlight color. That's actually technically a reflection of the light source onto the surface of whatever's facing that light source. We can kind of blend this together. And there's a bit of the bounce light from here. If you can get a sphere to look three dimensional, you're on the right track. If you can't, then well, you got to practice that. And that is in my course, of course. Depending on the reflectivity of the material, it could have a more sharp reflection of that as well as this, but that depends on what the material is. Anyway, the reason I, I showed that is because we need to differentiate the different parts. So we have part that is in shadow and that crosses over to, we could say midtones. And then here's where you would have the core shadow which is CS for that. And then you have the highlights. Let's actually take this out so that we get the idea across because I want you to be very aware of these three very specific value groups because, and we'll come back to that in a moment, we want to take this image and make three versions of it that we're gonna manipulate to sort of match these lighting scenarios. So as we mentioned, there's a shadow, mid-tone and highlight. So let's make a shadow version. Let's just take your whole painting and duplicate it. This is the first version. Pull up levels by hitting Control L if you're using Photoshop. And then we're just gonna adjust the value so that it's just not too dark, but enough to make it feel like it's in shadow. Press OK. And we need the mid-tones. And I think where it already is is pretty much mid-tones. We'll just use that. And now we need the highlight. So now we have our three versions. And it's OK to go too far. We can paint in the actual form and stuff later. We just want to get the effect of these images first. I'm going to turn off the mid-tones and we want to turn the lights off as though we're flipping a switch. It's in complete darkness. And then we're going to turn this layer back on of the light, but we'll be putting a mask on it down here in the bottom right by holding Alt. I'll put a black mask. Anything you paint on this black part of this layer with white will reveal whatever that layer is. So it's like you're shining a light literally onto the painting. So we can ask ourselves, what would it require to match that lighting scenario? The first thing that we have to be aware of is the geometry that you have. So we know it's quite sphere-like up here, almost like an egg going down like that. So we can sort of draw a wireframe. And here we have a cylinder, it's a sphere here, so on and so forth. And if we know how to cast light onto those three-dimensional forms, we can pretty much apply any lighting scenario onto them quite easily. And we'll get to the specifics of the hair and, and all that stuff later. We're just trying to get the effect of this lighting to look like it. So here it looks like there's light on the left side. I'm gonna use just a regular round brush. And it's like we're gonna be turning on the light to be shining in these areas, matching what we see over here. So it's only hitting the nose this part of the eye, that part of the cheek. 
the lower lip, but not the upper lip entirely. And it might look a little bit too bright at first, and that's fine. This whole left side. Now let me turn this back on so you can see what the lighting is doing. And I can use the mixer brush onto that black layer, blend that in. And blend it in up here as well. I'm ping-ponging my eyes back and forth, making sure that the lighting is the same. And this is a sharp edge on the left side, and then it blurs over onto the nose area. Now we'll pretend we treated the whole piece in the same way. Now we can bring back some of the mid-tones. So let's actually turn the lighting off, turn on the original painting. We're considering that the mid-tones and then putting a mask on that as well. Let's bring back that lighting. And here we're gonna be painting the mid-tones as a sort of bounce light on the right side or the bottom right side. Cause I'm looking at the photo and there's clearly bounce light coming in pretty strong. And whenever you have those really distinct value groups separated into those three places, the more believable in terms of dimensionality that your character will have. So as I'm doing that, I'm looking at the photo and I see that we went too dark with these shadows. So in a moment, after I blend this a little bit more, I'm gonna actually lower the opacity of this and reveal the very bottom layer, which is the same thing as the midtone layer. I'll lower it a little bit. Rather quickly, just by manipulating a few layers, we just introduced a completely new lighting scenario. And of course, we can match it a little bit more by creating some layers on top and setting that to lighten. And we look over at this warm orange glow, and then we can kind of softly paint that with a lower opacity, get a little bit of orange in there, maybe a little bit for the bounce light as well. And let's duplicate everything, so I want to do another version, flatten all this, and quickly compare the lighting. Here, it kind of feels gray and flat. It's not as definitive as a lighting scenario, but now when we do this and turn it back on, it's very clearly a definitive lighting scenario. We're gonna do one more. So we're gonna actually try one of these uh, more cinematic ones to see if we can make it a little bit more interesting. With something like a theatrical cinematic lighting scenario, the rim light is actually pretty strong and it's gonna be the brightest light. So when we add our additional light source, it's going to be not as bright in the foreground, but much brighter on the rim. So let's actually use your original painting, which is this one here, as the, the main lighting which is the fill coming here on the left side. We're just gonna light that character. Yeah, let's just do a very soft light from the left side. And now we'll paint that really bright rim light onto the lightest layer. And use uh, this brush here. And so you just go to the edges of the geometry here and you just let that light cast right onto it. On the earring, on the hair, natural hand movement for curves. Uh, it's easier on the left side. Get a bit of rim light on the nose. And I would say that this lighting is probably the quickest way to get an effective cinematic look that feels like it's a pretty image. You'll see this lighting scenario be used quite a lot for things like splash art or cinematography, keyframes, things like that. And so once we got that in on that layer, let's flip it back. And notice automatically that the three dimensionality is very quickly and easily placed in there. So let's go ahead and blend that on this airbrush is fine. It can, it can be sharp in certain areas. It doesn't have to be blurred everywhere. As you could see, it's sharper on the reference in certain areas, but more diffused in others. As it goes from white to towards the rest of the hair or the skin, there's a nice little orange transition color. That's a pretty important thing to notice for when you're doing this. So let's get a deeper orange and make sure that that transition color bleeds through to the skin area. And it works great. But this also makes that rim light brighter. And then just flatten those. And again, what I wanna do is compare the before and after for shifting the lighting and seeing how effective it is to borrow light from references like this or that. So let's go ahead and turn it off. I mean, it's not a bad piece. It's a pretty great start, but my recommendation would be to let's let's go a little further with this lighting or with, with lighting in general for your 